and there are a couple of main areas that where, where we can contribute. Um, adaptation and resilience is one of them. So some of our largest public health problems, whether that's infectious diseases, um, malnutrition, or just the health impacts of extreme weather events, are highly sensitive to climate change. So the health community is able to, through mobilizing its own resources and capacity, uh, to help protect people's health from climate risks. So that's a core part of the agenda that we have. Um, the second part is um, on the mitigation agenda, because as countries do what they need to do to decarbonize, they can help us solve some of the greatest emerging health issues that we now have. So we have recently uh, released uh, a report showing that air pollution kills about 7 million people a year around the world. It's one of the biggest killers that we have. And so the same actions that are going to reduce carbon emissions can also help us to counter the air pollution problem. And so we are able to, we, we are able, we want to work with the, the climate change community so that we can solve these two problems together. Uh, the final point is, is actually on economics and financing, that um, if you take into account the health co-benefits of climate change mitigation, they actually cover the cost of most of the mitigation measures. So we have a positive argument to bring to the, uh, to the climate agenda. We quite identify with the, uh, the Talanoa Dialogue. It has this quite clear narrative of taking stock of where you are, where you want to be and how you're going to get there. And I think that from the WHO side, from the health side, there are a couple of concrete things that we can contribute. One is that it's very clear where we want to be. We want to be in a world where the most vulnerable populations have health systems which will protect them from climate risks. And so the example of the special initiative that we have launched on climate change and health in small island developing states is our mechanism to get to that goal. So we have a very clear vision that by 2030, the health systems in the most vulnerable countries are resilient to climate change risks. That's one. The other is that we want a world where at the same time as we solve the climate problem, we also solve the health problem. And so given that air pollution in particular is such a massive uh, burden on people's health and on health systems, we want uh, countries to take the opportunity that they now have to save money, save lives and save the climate at the same time. And so we're giving guidance, we're monitoring uh, progress in um, actions that countries are taking, both to reduce uh, air pollution and to combat climate change. And we're demonstrating that in fact the climate commitments that countries have already made would save a significant number of lives and would save a significant number of uh, significant amount of money as well. So we have that, that vision of, of a world where we have clean energy systems and where the climate problem is solved at the same time as we promote health.